you're a web designer or web developer, you've probably heard of HTML5, and you may already be using parts of it in your code. But what do we mean when we talk about HTML5? We're going to explore what it is and how we can start using its new features in this series. When we talk about HTML5, we're talking about the next version of HTML, or the Hypertext Markup Language. What we all use today is HTML4, or more specifically, HTML4.01, which has been the standard for about 10 years. HTML4's lifespan is both a blessing and a curse. Being an unchanged standard for such a long time, the browsers have become exceedingly good at parsing and displaying the markup fairly consistently. It may seem as though modern browsers and some legacy browsers display HTML very inconsistently, but compared to the browsers of the 90s and early 2000s, they are extremely standardized. But with the long span of stability comes resistance to change. With so many browser vendors and so much pressure to remain compatible and consistent, making changes to the HTML specification must be done with great care. HTML5 as a standard has a very strong focus on being backwards compatible. While there are many new features and tools, it is designed so that the markup of any new features shouldn't interfere with the parsers of older browsers. Now, the older browsers will not be served with a new feature, but the pages will still be readable. HTML5 will mean different things to different people, but typically when we're talking about HTML5, we're talking about the new features being added to browsers through the HTML5 specification and some related feature proposals that aren't in the proper specification. These features include the video and audio tags, Canvas and SVG for drawing on the web page, offline applications that allow us to run our applications without an internet connection, new form elements that give us new ways to input information into our web forms, new semantic markup tags that give us the ability to more accurately describe our markup using new tags, geolocation that allows us to get information about the user's location right from the browser, local storage APIs that allow us to use the browser for persistent storage, and drag and drop APIs that natively integrate drag and drop capabilities into the browser. To understand how HTML5 is evolving, it is important to understand the roles that the standards body play in defining things like HTML and CSS. When the internet was young, new tags and features weren't handed down from some mighty standards authority. They were developed at the will of the browser makers. The people who built the browsers understood what features would be beneficial to the web, and they would decide what new tags and features would be used in their browsers. In the best case, they would often discuss with the other browser developers to at least agree on some sort of standard. This is how specifications for HTML came about. They were an attempt to document the common features of web browsers so that browsers could support at least some common set of features. The World Wide Web Consortium, or the W3C, took the leading role in writing standards for HTML. Though even as they wrote it, browsers continued to compete and create new features. Web standards are a delicate balancing act between browser vendors innovating and building new features and standards bodies defining the standards so HTML can be compatible with all browsers. Indeed, many of the features we use today still technically have no final specification. For instance, the window object in the DOM, the global object for the browser's JavaScript environment, and XML HTTP request, the basis for the now ubiquitous AJAX, both are in draft form. Since HTML 4.01 had been standardized in 1999, new features were slow to be incorporated by the W3C. Now, the W3C had begun to focus on XHTML, an XML-based markup for web pages, but no headway was being made on the next version of HTML, or HTML5. But the browser vendors wanted to add features, but to be able to document and standardize them became essential. The W3C was going nowhere fast with HTML5, so the big names in the web put together the Web Hypertext Application Technology Working Group, or the WHAT Working Group. The WHAT Working Group includes members from Mozilla, Apple, Google, and Adobe, and they set out to define what they called HTML5. The WHAT Working Group started furiously building the HTML5 specification, and as public adoption of XHTML made it apparent that it was not the future of the web, but the W3C discontinued work on the XHTML 2.0 specification and adopted the What Working Group's HTML5 specification. So currently both groups are working on the specification. 
Now, it can be confusing to have two groups working on their own version of the spec, but the simplest way to look at it is the what working group is all about adding new features and pushing the envelope, while the W3C really can't do this and has to build a reliable, stable standard. Now, there's a lot of debate as to whether the what working group still serves a purpose, and if it's only creating confusion. It may be a bit confusing to have the two standard bodies building the spec, but for developers, it's important to understand that HTML5 is not done and it won't be done in any real way for a very long time. What really matters is the browser's implementation of the new features. And while the specifications may be very specific and informative, they are no substitute for testing the features in your target browsers. Now, different browsers support different features to different degrees, and it's changing every day. It would be ridiculous to try to present a compatibility graph in a video like this because it'll likely have been changed in the time it takes to export the video. Fortunately, along with all these wonderful features also comes techniques to reliably detect a browser's compatibility with the various features in HTML5. One of the best tools for detecting compatibility in browsers is the Modernizer tool, which runs a series of tests in the browser and reveals what features are available, so you can more easily provide fallback content when using HTML5 features. Now, put simply, no major browser fully supports HTML5, and right now there's no way they could. It is still years from being a finalized W3C recommendation, but all of the major browsers are working towards it. Even Internet Explorer is supporting HTML5 features with Internet Explorer 9. In the upcoming videos, we're going to talk about the new semantic tags available in HTML5. In the future HTML5 chapters, we're going to take a look at brand new tags like the video tag, canvas tag, SVG, and more.